I survive by keeping in strict routine. I get to bed at a certain time. I get up in the same time every day in the morning. In the evening, I plan what's going to happen tomorrow. Planning ahead shows me that there is going to be a tomorrow and there is going to be a future. The secret for me came by starting with words, words that were part in my life before I had my stroke. Work, word, work that I had known well before my stroke. Maybe a show, a movie, a book, or something as a particular interest before. Something I enjoyed many times before. You may surprise yourself that your brain hasn't completely forgotten the words and the story. It just needs a kickstart, and it starts slowly to move again. And this brings for me peace in my life. I was working in Amman, uh, I was a petroleum engineer uh, working. I had a stroke in January 2011. Uh, I was 39 years old. It was caused by a ruptured aneurysm, which is like a, a blood vessel in my head burst. Uh, I was given emergency neurosurgery. I spent five days in a coma after the um, neurosurgery, and I spent a total of nine days in the IC unit, IC intensive unit. I was two weeks in the ward, and then I did 11 weeks in rehab as an inpatient. Early years, I was um, in Martha um, for uh, four months. Um, Physio, occupation, and speech therapy. Janet, speech therapy. <laughs> in Martha. And five, four months ended, so, and then the next stage, we went to Prince Charles Hospital for Rio. Rio, it's uh, speech therapy only. And then Aphasia lift program in uni for two times. So four weeks the first time, and then the second 
uh, uh, time, it was three words. Bruce and I feel humbled and privileged to be able to share our experiences with you. We appreciate the opportunity offered by the AAA to speak here today. We are grateful to our family and our friends and the professionals that helped us recover mentally, <laughs> physically, <laughs> and emotionally. <laughs> Bruce and I together wish you the best for your own futures. Manchester. I'm a mother with two teenagers. I was hit by a motorbike when I was six years old. I had the stroke on my right hand side. I could not talk or walk for a long time. I felt I was trapped because I couldn't speak. I was frustrated because I couldn't say what I wanted to express. As a young child, before I had the accident, art was my passion. I remember a speech pathologist came up to me and handed me over a book. At that time, speech pathologists and occupational therapists just started to come to hospitals. I remember this because this book was about colour. In my mind, I was reading. This is the colour red, this is the colour yellow. What happens if we mix colours red and blue? It will, it will be colour purple. I was so thrilled, something I related to. When I looked up to the speech pathologist, the look on his face said it all. Over 35 years, uh, through the logical test, I've been never asked an art question. People say to me, yes, you're using a creative side of your brain. I say, yes, I agree. But I also use the logic side of the brain to show you to understand what I'm thinking about each artwork. I have solved the problems in my way that suits me, but we end up getting results. <laughs> and lastly, we're all different. We all think differently. It is up to us to compromise and acceptance, strike a balance from each other. Thank you. We actually are a fantastic group, although on occasion we cannot say what we think and what comes out of our mouths doesn't communicate what we are thinking. Mm -hmm. Knowing this and it being a part of who I am and what I was doing, it was like being a baby again, crawling, walking, then running. Kind of confusing to me, but it's just like climbing a ladder. You can't miss a step, otherwise things become confusing for me and others because the words from my thoughts are not all there. Sometimes the words that come out from my mouth are not the same as what I mean. I can hear it, but most of all I can actually feel it. I am in my cocoon now. I'm developing into something else. I know what it is, but I can't come out yet as I have not changed completely. My body sections are all there and all in place, but I want all parts of it to blend together, to be combined, and at this time, it is not. When I emerge, and I will, I'll be whole. My body will blend together, become one whole blended piece rather than sections. Be able to see all of life as a whole rather than pieces of it. Thank you. I had a stroke at work. I was 39 years old. Um, having a stroke changed my life. Oh, it's hard work. Now, stroke sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't give up. I go to speech and physio uh, at 
UQ. I go to the aphasia choir. No, yes, group at PA, UQ, and U, no, Wynnum. I'm working to improve my walking and talking. One step at a time. Thank you. My name is Jack Hurley. I live here on the Sunshine Coast. Up until the 8th of January 2008, my, my life was flying. I had a brown belt in karate. I was a school swimming champion and I played soccer and football. At school, I was academic, achieving well, and getting ready to start grade 10. But at the beginning of 2008, God did, dip, God did, God had different plans. January the, 20, uh, January the 8th, I had a massive stroke, and my brain was damaged by a massive clot. I could not say much, just a few words. I had trouble putting them into the right order. It was nearly two years ago before I could go back full time to school. My, in, in, my intentional prog uh, prognosis was that I would never be able to speak properly. This is not the case. I, I get better every day. I have a facial. Some part, some years ago, my dad, good dad, dad's good friend, suggested we may find Toastmasters helpful. So, dad and I had a talk, and then we decided to join. I wanted to learn how to speak in public, and to be able to speak to a, a group of people like you. You you will gain from it. Well, it like I have, but you also help and inspire other people on their journey on their journey to to better public speaking. Thank you.
As frustrating as it is, I, said, I have decided that I must look at fascia as just another language within the language journey that I have taken in my life. Thank you very much. Thank you. People with aphasia can find communicating with others confronting, make situations awkward, and be hysterically funny. But it is always unendingly, unrelentingly frustrating and mystifying for both the affected person and those around them. So to my mind, people with aphasia need advocacy. Someone to stand beside them or behind them, but always someone who's got their back to help them move forward again. I try to be that person for Bruce. I have watched his confidence grow as he slowly wrestles his speech back from the thief. Today he has a, he's had a big win and I'm really proud. Oh, okay. <laughs> so my personal acronym for those caring for a person with aphasia is hope, help, optimism, patience and ears. Some things, the important things, the thief didn't take and remain exactly the same. Bruce is still my handsome, articulate, funny, intelligent husband. He's just a little quieter for now. Thank you. young and young at heart when I had my stroke and I can turn and turn to what I can only describe as popular culture at the time the arts music exercise reading anything which I felt led me in the right direction and gave me hope that one day I would feel connected in my own skin again more recently I found myself writing poetry something I did as a child has been very helpful uh, the flow of soothing melodic phrases using expressive words have allowed me to move safely into spaces. This one's called Hope. Someone gave me hope today, so please do not try to take it away. I need hope to enter my wounded spirit, love, care and compassion to fill it. Hope can give me dreams to fly if we we'll Give me laughter and make me cry, <laughs> like now. Um, hope can conquer my darkest hour for letters which release enormous power. Power to live my life and heal. Let, not, let hope not be a dream, let hope be real. Thank you for listening. <laughs> So something's in the 
brains and it's starting to work. I think, wow. But I didn't know that. I didn't find out, farm out about that until later. <laughs> and initially, of course, like a lot of you, first one or two words together, suddenly by the end of that year and the beginning of the next year, start more language coming out of my brain. Next, and then now this year, this is the most exciting year. This year, for the first time, I read the first normal book. Yay. Yes. Yay. One Saturday, a few mates and I wanted to go for a dirt bike ride. I was riding my 450cc dirt bike when I found a big channel of water. I thought to myself, I could jump over this. <laughs> As I jumped over the channel, the front wheel of my motorbike dug into the ground, which then threw me at first into the dirt. I was found unconscious, so my friend connected triple zero of the ambulance. I remember I was paralysed down my total right side and could not speak. I had lovely ladies helping me <laughs> to walk, talk, read, write all over again. In my free time, I enjoy rock and roll. <laughs> Dirty. Demonstrate. <laughs> I have been dancing in lots of different locations. Dancing has helped me feel confident in my progress to recovery. As you can see, I've got a pretty good life, onwards and upwards. Thank you all for taking your time to listen to my story. My career was 25 years as a United Kingdom police officer in West Yorkshire. The demands and the stress involved in the job were just, just immense and I couldn't do 30 years because I would have burnt out. So I retired at 25 and we moved to Australia. And as my poem said, I won't go into that, but basically I just got a little bit hot on the day of my stroke and the motion of putting my head into the toilet, my stroke physician, Rohan Grimley, said the blood burst through the bacilla, bacilla artery at the back of my neck, clotted and then just dissipated. So in comparison to many of you here, I had really what, 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 what was a much milder stroke. It, I feel the impact upon my life at the time. I could have had a major one, but certainly listen to you all. This is why I stand here very lucky, having been able to use my, my limbs, which have never really lost other than the initial phase. Okay, I understand. Please don't talk to me in baby talk. It really isn't good. Even though my words don't come out right, I can hear, I understood. Don't finish all my sentences when you talk to me this way. It's clear you wish I'd hurry up so we can get on with the day. Even though my words are jumbled and I slur to get them out, inside I know what I want to say, so give me time and please don't shout. It's important for me to process what I think I want to tell. Even though when the words are spoken, they may not come out too well. Buckets of patience I know you'll need to help me through this time. But please, oh please be mindful. They are not your words, but mine. I know my brain will heal, but you have to give me space. Having a conversation, does not need to be a race. Sometimes I may not want to join in what anyone has to say, but that's okay, I do not mind, 
as if my brain needs a rest today. Thank you. I detest my fear and